In this video, I want to show you how to install the rolls of roofing on a torch down roof. Let's get into it. In this video, we're going to be installing a roll of poly glass torch down roofing. What I always recommend is make sure that you install the entire system properly. So not only the torch down cap, but your base layers, your flashings, follow the manufacturer recommendations. We like working with poly glass and we use their base layer, their mid ply, as well as their torch cap sheet. Anytime that you are torching, please make sure to work safely, have a fire extinguisher close by. In the field of the torch down, it's important to properly burn the back of the roll to get good adhesion, as well as getting a nice bleed out of all your seams. Let's get into it. All right, we're ready to get the field installed. So in this video, I wanna show you uh, essentially how to install just a simple roll of roofing. We're not gonna be doing penetrations or any details, flashings or things like that. Just how to install the middle of the roof, what we call the field of the roof. The way we install it is a two-step method. We first burn the middle of the roll, then we go back and do the seams. You can do it both ways. However, we found that we get the best results for our seams if we do it in a two-step method. That way, we can really focus on the seams and getting a nice bleed out, as the middle of the roof is really not as critical as the seams. The first thing we do is we lay out a roll of roofing. Now for this example, I don't wanna go all the way because I do wanna show you how it is to terminate and start a new roll of roofing because on the field, on regular size roofs, you're gonna have that quite a bit. You're not gonna have your rolls go all the way from one side of the roof to the other. So we're gonna assume that the roll ends here and then we're gonna continue another lap here. Torch down rolls have a side lap, which is this right here. These rolls have three inches along the length of the roll that's made to burn and adhere one to the other. And this really allows us to get a good solid joint when we're burning here. Now keep in mind this roof is made for a demo, so generally we wanna have areas like this. You don't wanna have this exposed to the sun. Really in this video, we're showing you two things. Install the field of the roof and how to do your joints. So we just wanna make sure that the edges are aligned. Start rolling it back. Then we're gonna start torching. Now, one thing that we like to do a little bit differently than how some other people do it and how some manufacturers uh, suggest is we like to burn and kick the roll out in front of us as opposed to standing on the back side and using a J hook to pull that back. The reason is for safety purposes, we never like to walk backwards on a roof. You always wanna walk forward and see what's ahead of you because it's very easy to step off the edge if you're not looking. So we'll actually stand on the field itself on the roll, burn it and kick it out. When we're burning it, we wanna get this film burnt um, and melted. Now we're staying back six inches from each side as these scenes we're gonna do separately. But really, you wanna have the majority of the flame here and 30% of the flame on the base itself. When you're installing your field, if you ever see this top become brown from heating up the bottom side, that means you've overheated it and you don't wanna do that. You can burn through the membrane and also if you heat it up too much, you can permanently damage it, which will cause premature failure. So we've burned our field down. Um, the next thing we wanna do is start burning the seam. Now before we do that, um, these ends right here, what we wanna do is cut it at a 45 degree angle. And what that's gonna allow us to do is, when we have the new roll that's coming on top of it, it's gonna allow for a good bond right here. If we were not to cut this off, we would have a double layered system right here, which would essentially allow water to possibly seep in through here. By cutting this at a 45 degree angle, will allow us to get a good bond right here at this vulnerable corner.
Now as this is heated up, he's pushing it down with the trowel and he's achieving that quarter to half inch of bleed out that we're looking for. So this is a perfect looking seam right here. All right, so we've got this first area done. So as I mentioned, we cut this short to simulate a end lap. So an end lap occurs when you have one roll ending and another roll starting. You wanna have six inches of overlap between the new roll and the old roll. Keep in mind, this corner here should always be cut at a 45 degree angle. And what that's gonna allow us to do is this new roll will bond to this base and still have a three inch overlap. So this is about three inches right here, and our new roll is gonna extend about three inches past this. Now at this end lap here, we have some special precautions that we have to take uh, because the field is not prepped. These side laps have this overlap area where it has a film that burns off. The end laps do not have that. So in order to prep this for a proper bonding, we're gonna heat this up to remove the granules, then adhere the new roll onto the existing. And the way we want to do it is lay this over and using our trowel here, we're gonna make a light mark across the entire thing. That way we have a light intendation. You don't want to go too deep, you don't want to cut into the material, but you have that guide for us. And now we're able to heat it up and embed the granules. So you can see what we did here was embed all those granules into the asphalt. That way when we flop this over, we're not burning this new material onto granules, which is not gonna bond as well as it is right now. Right now when we have all those granules gone, we're gonna have a real smooth and tight, clean finish. You can see what Rona was doing before. He was using his trowel as a guide not to overheat this area of the roof, uh, as opposed to just keeping the heat on the left side where we wanna get rid of those granules. So now we're ready to flop this over, burn this, and get a nice tight seal on both the end lap and the side lap here. All right, now we have our end lap done. Uh, you can see we've got a quarter inch bleed out all the way across, which is exactly what we're looking for. We have our last side lap to do here. Uh, I'm gonna show you one last detail that's really, in our opinion, an optional detail, and that's to granulate the seams. You can buy these at any roofing supply. They're essentially the same granules that are on top of your roofing membrane. We're talking to our roofing manufacturer and our manufacturer representative, um, this is really an aesthetic option as opposed to a waterproofing requirement. So really, if you wanna make your roof look seamless, you can install these. Uh, the nice thing about letting the bleed outs stay is that you can see the bleed out and the proper bleed out that you're supposed to have. So I'm gonna show you how to apply this. Really, as someone's doing the seams, one person needs to go behind them and spread the granules out. It's not rocket science, you just throw them on there and I'll stick on top of that hot asphalt.
So we have excess of granules here. That's always gonna happen when you're granulating your seams. Once this roof is cooled down and the asphalt is hardened, you can brush away or uh, blow off the excess granules. So you can see this is what a granulated seam looks like and this is what an ungranulated seam looks like. And it really, in our opinion, talking to all our manufacturer reps, both of them will perform the same. It's just a matter of aesthetics. You can see which one you like better. Let us know below in the comments. We'd love to hear if you guys granulate your seams or don't. We'll see you in the next one. Guys, thanks for watching. We have a lot of other videos on this channel about torch down roofing. If we're missing anything, please comment below. We'd love to explain. Keep in mind, we are in Southern California, so we're building to our building codes and standards here in California. If there's anything that you like to do different, let us know below. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.